last week on The Season. All right, Isaac, what's up with me? Chin up just a little bit. He was having problems and he just couldn't, he couldn't rebound, he couldn't perform. And that's when we kind of investigated it further and they decided, hey, he's at the point now where he needed to have surgery. We called him Coach Gross in, in spring. He was the vocal leader of our football team. Hey, G, you better hold the ball today, G. Coach Jack, my DB being too physical. I was taken out of it. I love this sport. And this sport changed, it changed me. I said, God, please don't take it from me yet. Man, look, it's first game day in the vault. It's a new stadium, the fans out here, we're going to put on a show. And there's a fake handoff, pass inside, Pack steps in the end zone, touchdown, Ole Miss! Get an opportunity to play the number one team in the country at our place. You should start envisioning how that looks. On Saturdays, all of the action takes place at the vault. But during Alabama week, there was plenty of excitement in the Manning Center. Vern Lundquist is synonymous with college football, and he's just been a great asset to our, our game. And uh, the least we could do is surprise him with a couple of gifts on behalf of Ole Miss Athletics to, to thank him for his years of contribution to the SEC and to college football. Actually, Vern, I got a few guests I brought up here for oh, you. Well, Oh my God! We want to celebrate your retirement, Ole Miss style. So none, none better than Brandon Archie Manning. Congratulations! Brought a little something for you. And, oh my uh, God! This is a gift that I'll treasure, uh, and this talks about what Ole Miss represents. Uh, certainly, it's one of our favorite places that we've ever, ever come, and uh, I've been overwhelmed by the gratefulness of. of uh, of the people with whom I've interacted. While the administration honored an old friend, Coach Freeze and the team made a new one, thanks to another SEC great. Luke and his family are here. It's a, it's a make a wish. Our foundation, the Freeze Foundation, partnered with Tim Tebow's foundation. His people called Alice, who runs our foundation, just to see if we would partner with them to kind of make uh, Luke's weekend, a special weekend. I'm from, from Miami, man. I like those kicks you got. Oh, that brownies? Little brownies. brownies. I like it. Luke, how you doing, man? I'm Coach Freeze. It's, it's awesome to have you here today. I know you're looking forward to hanging out with him some and uh, experiencing the game tomorrow. Man, thank you for coming. Uh, we're, we're honored to have you. Up next on The Season. Knew he had the capability, knew of him, knew of his issues. He said, this is how it's going to be. It's not going to change. You have to do right. That's what you're here to do, and the only way you can get to the next level is if you do right. Clemson quarterback Chad Kelly has been dismissed from the program. The school calls it conduct detrimental to the university and team. That was probably the lowest moment of my life. Dabo Sweeney called it a pattern of behavior that is not consistent with the values of our program. I think it's fair to call him an overconfident quarterback since he was a recruit. I just think I wasn't a team player back then. Um, I kind of looked out just for myself and until I took a step back and realized it's a team sport, you have to have a whole team around you to help build you and your teammates up to get to where you want to be. And that's kind of the biggest thing I learned and, and just take coaching and understand that they just want the best for you. You might not think at the moment that it's not good, but at the end of the day, they just want the best for you. Kelly would depart Clemson after the 2013 football season, winding up in the quaint town of Scuba, Mississippi. It was here at East Mississippi Community College where he would have one last chance to resurrect his football career.
there was nothing to do in Scuba. And I took a visit there. The offensive line coach said, if you come here, we will win a national championship. And come, come to find out a year later, we won a national championship. Shout out to the squad, baby! Yeah. Woo! Humbling experience, yeah. but man, hey. Dude right here, right here. He the best, man. I love him to death, man. Love too, man. Glad he came to this thing. Already. But nah, I mean, I make friendships just like that. They're gonna live forever, and it's just a blessing to be in this position. In 2014, Kelly took the JUCO world by storm, throwing for nearly 4,000 yards and 47 touchdowns, en route to an undefeated season for the Lions. He was a wanted man, on the radar of every college football program in the country including Hugh Freeze and the Rebels. Well, we're just trying to, you know, recruit the best players at, at each position. Knew he had the capability, knew of him, knew of his issues. Being in a Mississippi Juco probably helped us. If he was in another one somewhere, we probably wouldn't have chased it. He said, this is how it's going to be. It's not going to change. You have to do right. That's what you're here to do, and the only way you can get to the next level is if you do right. He had to change some things in his lifestyle, but uh, when it came to the football part, he had the confidence and knew that he was going to be the guy. The Chad Kelly era is underway. Kelly to throw one on one on the near side of the field, and Cody Core going up top to score. Touchdown, Ole Miss, on an excellent opening drive. Kelly to throw again for Stringfellow. Touchdown. That was a sweet pill right there. Chad's a great guy, man. It's, he's, he's a guy that I love protecting for. With him out there making plays like he did against LSU or just making those crazy hits and runs, you know, that shows great character about how he plays the game and how he has the love of the game. Nothing's too big for that guy. Nothing's too big. The moment is never too big for him. And um, he just lives in the moment, and, and he's just an unbelievable competitor. All of a sudden, all the pressure in here is on this Ole Miss offense. Let's watch Chad Kelly here and see how he deals with this adversity. He almost comes across to me as a guy that when the pressure is on him and when people are doubting him, he seems to almost embrace that more than when they're playing with a lead. High snap, Kelly has to collect it, makes a desperation heave into traffic. Treadwell off his hands and into the hands of Adebayo. A crazy carom and a touchdown for the Rebels. Armed with a team-first mentality, Kelly scorched the competition in 2015 establishing himself as one of the nation's premier passers on his journey from Scuba to Sugar Bowl MVP. Kelly with a pump fake, looking end zone, wide open, and walking in is Cody Core with a Rebel touchdown. The most outstanding player of the All-State Sugar Bowl is Chad Kelly. It means everything, but it means the world to me to have players like this and coaches like this. And I mean, these are my best friends, these are my brothers, and I love them to death. And I'm so glad they're, they're my teammates. I think Chad Kevin is becoming a leader because he's shaking her arms and stepping up. I'm sure he's welcome to study. Jim Kelly and Chad Kelly. Last night as we were going to dinner to see how these kids look up to him, how he acts around them. I mean, that's amazing to me how much he's grown up in just a couple of years. And I'm proud to say that this is my nephew, this is my godson, this is a man that is making a difference in young kids' lives. And that's where you got to start with the young kids. I'm so proud. I've seen tremendous growth in Chad as a person, and I think that that is uh, one of the reasons he's having the success he is, is, you know, he wants to, as in his own words, he wants to rewrite his story, and I want to help him do that. I want his last chapter um, to be different than, than the beginning chapters. Last ride. That's it, yes, sir. Uh, rewrite your story. Always. Finish it. Yes, sir. Don't, don't stop short. Yes, sir. Let's finish it. My life had really changed because the way he talked to me and the way he laid it out, everything on the board and said, this is how it's gonna be. It really made me think about, you gotta be a team player first of all, 
and you got to respect your coaches. I poured a lot into Chad, and he could make a mistake tonight, but but proud of, of the transformation that he's that he's made, and I think all of that affects what he's doing on the field. I understand coaching. I understand what it is to be a team player, and and ultimately I understand what it is, what it means to be a quarterback at such a great university. When we return. And this time, Hurt is hammered! Oh, boom! Marquise Haynes hammered the quarterback. Welcome to Ole Miss Bama 2016. The wait is finally over. It's the SEC opener for the Rebels and the Tide. The road to Atlanta begins now. This is what you live for right here. Look around. Look around. This is what you live for. Okay? Hey, number 15 and number 6. Number 15 and number 6. Go have some fun. Go have some fun. What time is this? You know, we proud ourselves on starting fast and, uh, you know, taking the fight, uh, tempo of the fight to the defense. That's something we take pride in every single week. First drive. First drive. So the first drive. Yeah, we do it. Let's go. We got Make plays, baby. Make plays. Five wides. Kelly's got a man. At the 50, it's Evan Ingram. First down, Rebels at the 35-yard line. First down! First down! Pass. A, a zip going in there. Caught at the 23-yard line. Anna Boyjo caught a dart from Kelly. We definitely had to make big plays down the field to beat them. Um, that's one thing about Alabama. You can't just keep chipping away and um, small plays here and there. To beat them and to compete with them and, and score points on them, you have to make big plays. First and 10 with the 24-yard line of Alabama. There's a handoff to Judd. Judd off the left side. Breaks clear. He may go. He's in the five. He's in the end zone. Touchdown. Oh, miss. Yeah. 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 The Rebels pop the tide in the mouth right out of the gate. Well, the question was, could this offensive line muster any running game to have help Chad Kelly? He threw the ball effectively, and what did it do? It allowed Rod Taylor and Javon Patterson, number 79 and 73, to get their blocks, and what a beautiful drive. My guy like went inside, and I looked, and all of a sudden, Judd just busted out of the lines, the, the O-line and D-line. Have it to, to work to a T just the way we designed it and, uh, and blocked it all week, and explosive run, you know, 20-plus yards, and getting into the end zone, and kind of setting the stage on what kind of afternoon this is going to be. Um, you know, for our opponent. Now that's what I'm talking about. That's the way to set the tone, great composure. Hey, something good happened to us, play the next play. Something bad happened to us, play the next play. Keep believing. Way to start this game off, son. Way to start this game off. So fourth down for the Crimson Tide. They will attempt another field goal. Well, Alabama, he's got the wind in his face. Here's the kick. It's a low line drive. It looks like it's going to be no good. It looked like maybe they're on the right side of the defensive line. Somebody may have gotten a hand on it, David. Reps lead 7-3, double fake. He throws deep over the middle. One on one down there. And the pass is a jump ball caught by Street Fellow. Oh, my goodness. There's nobody back there. They go up for it, and Stringfellow is just bigger, and he comes down with it. We take a shot every now and then, and our receivers and quarterback were making big plays going down the field, and uh, we caught them with a couple of play actions. So they didn't have their eyes in good places, and we caught an Evan Ingram going wide open down the sideline. First and 10, there's the snap. Fakes a quick pitch, fires over the middle. Ingram is wide open. He has it in the 30. See you, baby. 10-5, touchdown, yes, sir. Ole Miss. Well, we had already called a, a play previously uh, where we tossed it to the back and uh, the inside Mike linebacker pursued it hard. And we said, man, if they're coming that fast, they're flowing that fast, the next time we need to do the play action off of it. The, the defense thought we were running the same run play and I just slipped right by him. Ooh, the closest guy to him was Richard Cross. While the ball's in the air, you're saying, oh, please catch it, oh, please catch it, oh, please catch it. <laughs> so uh, once I scored, I just like, just just took a breath and just enjoyed it. I kind of just, just took the moment in and just turned around. And um, I love this place so much and is, has had so many memories here. So I had to make a couple more before I head out.
It's loose ball. Picked up. John Youngblood, number 38. Ooh. Loose ball. Picked up by the Rebels, Youngblood. He's motoring to the house. 15, 10, 5. Touchdown. Oh, mess. I saw him come around the edge, and I already knew what time it was. Um, I saw him, and that guy is vicious. Marquise Haynes came off of that left side. I mean, shot out of a cannon. Just like the adversity happened for us, adversity happened for uh, Bama. So with that happening, we just uh, capitalized on it. You have to to be the number one team like that. Every chance you get, you have to score. I got to believe that, that his dad, who he lost, over the uh, offseason, right after he was awarded that 38 to wear the Chucky Mullins number, is looking down on Oxford, Mississippi with a great big smile on his face uh, today. You gotta believe it. That was for my dad. I love y'all. Thanks for coming. So you dad, I love you. As good as things were going for the Rebels, no lead is safe in the SEC West. Late in the first half, Alabama would make its charge. Gun formation for Jalen Hurts. There's the snap. Play action. He wants to throw. He's in the pocket. Fires over the middle. And he's got his man wide open and caught. And still on his feet and spinning to the 28-yard line is Calvin Ridley. Direct snap to Ridley. Comes left. Dives in. Touchdown, Alabama. That's an answer, isn't it? That's a gain of three. It'll be fourth down. The Rebels will have to punt away. Back to receive is Eddie Jackson. He's going to take it at the 16-yard line. Try to bring it back. He gets to the 25 to 30. Still on his feet to the sidelines. There's a flag down. He'll head down the sidelines to the 30. Breaks the tackle. Last diving effort. He takes it in for the score. Mentally tough. Mentally tough. They just running down there taking the play off. What? Everybody got to do their job. It's a down fight for we in here. We got to, hey, we got to First down. keep the lead. Oh, man. Both teams to go to the locker room. Ole Miss leads at the half by a score of 24 to 17 as we go to all zeros here. We are the best team out there. It's expected. Don't worry, don't worry about making it here. Just do your job. We know we can win. We just did it two years in a row. We can do it three years in a row. Why? Because we got the offense to do it. We got the defense to do it. We got the coaches that are going to put us in the right place. We just got to finish. We got to go finish. That's all we got to do. We're back here in Oxford. We're about ready to start the second half here. 17th ranked Ole Miss, 24. Number one, Alabama, 17. Not much pressure here. It comes from the backside. Fumble picked up by Alabama. Did he cross the line? Yes, he did. And just like that, the Crimson Tide's defense comes through in a big way. It's Darren Payne, the nose guard. He's looking to throw, in trouble, and tries to throw, and he throws it right into the hands. An interception by one of the big guys for Alabama is Jonathan Allen. Allen is motoring down the right sidelines. He has a convoy of four guys there, and he is going to get into the end zone. Touchdown, Alabama. Come on, baby. Play next play. Play next play. We play in this conference every game today. Every game. Every game. No matter what happens, good or bad, you know, it's over now. Now get ready for the next play. And uh, that, that was the message on the sideline, just trying to get ready for the next snap. The defense was on the sideline. We were ready to go back out there. We were still fired up. The coaches were still confident in us. We were still confident and ready to get back out there and give it our all. I believe we were going to win. That's my expectation of me, myself, our coaches, and our team. You got to expect, you got to want, you got to have that fire in the entire game. Here comes pressure, throws to the end zone, touchdown, far side. Five yard strike to Stringfellow, touchdown, Ole Miss. Hey, Evan! On shot! On shot! Here it is, and he's going to kick it. It's going to bounce and go past the first guy, and it's rolling loose and on the ground, and Ole Miss recovers. It's Van Jefferson who ran past and caught it right on the sidelines. We got the ball. Deep in the end zone. Touchdown, A.J. Brown. Third and inches. Got it. Well, it was almost a nightmare finish for Alabama.
Hear me and hear me good. Listen closely. There ain't no hanging heads on this. There ain't no hanging heads. Here's the lesson. The lesson is every single play in the course of an event like that carries the same weight. Every single one of them. Right before we go out every game, bro, we lock on, bro, because it's a brotherhood here. Bro. We build trust in each other, communicate, communicate. We got this love for each other, man. We have to finish. We have to finish. We have to finish. We have to. We the best team, offense and defense. It's show first half. Bro, we got to finish. For the love of my brother, for the love of my coach, we have to finish. We got to finish. Really proud of, of a lot of things that uh, we're playing a lot of young kids in a lot of areas and the uh, thought that, uh, man, they competed. And I'm excited about uh, I'm excited about getting back out on the field with those guys. With George, it's going to be another uh, challenge, you know, SEC play. In my opinion, the most important game of the year because it's, it's the next one. Another SEC battle, another uh, a chance to defend your home turf. We just have to stay, stay in belief that we can uh, go out of way and just win out. Let's just get our keys together and just finish. I'm telling you, uh, after we finish, it won't, it won't be no problem who we face. I just, I'm, that's the expectation, that's the standard, and that's just what I expect from my teammates. Don't forget to pick up your copy of this week's game program this Saturday at Vaught-Hemingway Stadium, which features senior tight end Evan Ingram. And make sure you download the Rebel Rewards app to unlock exclusive augmented reality videos on Ole Miss posters, game programs, and more. <laughs>